So, after taking a break last week, we are back with chapter 65 of Kangen Omega. So, this chapter is titled Falcon's Identity, and much like the, you could either say, first or second chapter of the round, like last time with Carlos vs. Gaolang, we are getting Falcon's backstory. So, we get our stats, the height and weight for each fighter, uh, and then we get some interesting insight from Muteba. Or Matuba, Mutaba. I'm gonna say Mutaba, that sounds Muteba. Mutaba sounds more natural, I think. Um, but he's talking about how he recognizes Falcon uh, and how the scent is familiar to him. Then Falcon ditches all of the extra stuff, his scarf and glasses and gloves. Um, which is interesting, because I remember seeing some people that thought he would, like, have something hidden in his gloves that he would reveal, like, halfway through the fight. But he, he takes them off immediately, and we see that his hands are all gnarly, and his fingernails look like some kind of, uh, carnivore. Like a bird, like a... Oh, God. What, what sort of, uh, predatory bird that, uh... Hunts its prey. Uh, oh, geez. Hmm. No, I can't figure out what sort of carnivore falcon resembles. Um, but Matuba. Oh, shit. I'm just gonna keep calling him different names. Mutaba. Um, he's like, oh, yeah, I remember now. He was from Malaysia, and his name was Albert Lee the Wrecker. Um, and he says that he was someone who would basically give targets a fate worse than death. <laughs> and Toyota's like, oh yeah, you're right on the money. Um, how are you sure that you're blind? Because you're right on the money. Um, and then we get this really, really fucking cool panel of Falcon totally decked out in ninja gear with swords and shit. Um, and he says that he's from Singapore. Uh, then we flash over to the Nogi group, and they're talking about the Falcon. And, uh, Mana asks why he would be from Singapore if Purgator and Purgatory only had a pipeline to East Asia. And Nogi's like, yeah, they're connected to East Asia. Or, they're only connected to that, but, um, Katahara asks, uh, Nikaido Ren more information that they, or... I haven't done this in several days, so, um... I'm, I'm slipping a little. Um, he asks Nikaido Ren to reveal the information that they found out about Falcon. Uh, and they say that he's from Singapore, he's 29, he's the third son of a wealthy family who owned a trading firm. He has two older brothers, one older sister, and one younger brother. He learned Tai Chi in his childhood before quitting middle school and his martial arts experience after that is unknown, so I'm sure he's going to have some uh, crazy reveal of whatever sort of wacky training he underwent, obviously like ninja stuff. Um, and then he took part in a Beijing-based underground martial arts promotion called Heroic Tales, um, which is a Chinese promotion, which was how Toyota managed to get him into purgatory. So um, he was in the middleweight Class. He was the champion, and he was known as the King of Destruction. And it looks like this was before he had undergone some kind of partial training. Um, so, it seems like Falcon knows a lot of different stuff. Uh, so, we're, we're probably going to see more than just um, ninjutsu from him. Um, so, they're about to say the real reason he transferred to Purgatory, but then we flash back to Falcon, who's saying, Have at thee! Because he's, he's, um, he talks like a Shakespearean character. Um, and Rahito realizes that he must be a ninja. And he starts doing, uh, ninja fucking... He starts doing ninjutsu shit with his hands, um, and throws a tennis ball up in the air. And then he... slashes at the tennis ball with, I think, his thumbs? No, he's using his uh, pointer fingers, and he, like, slices out two little chunks from the tennis ball. And the audience on the Purgatory side is like, oh yeah, 
Falcon's so cool, are you scared now, Kangen Fighters? And Rohito says, are you for real? You're really gonna show that off to me? So remember, these people have no idea who Rohito is. As a, as a child, he was able to cut through fucking coins. This is child's play to him. I mean, really. <laughs> That's so funny. It's, it's really funny that Rihito is fighting someone who's basically, um, at least in terms of like his cutting power, is like a knockoff version of him. But the fight starts, and Falcon charges right at Rihito, and Rihito is trying to decide if he's going to go for an attack from the right or the left. But then he starts doing a bunch of shit with his hands that Rihito notices, and then there's this attack that surprises the audience, and they reveal it was actually a kick. Uh, as we had seen at the end of the last chapter, uh, Falcon's feet are also all gnarly and fucked up, and apparently he had also done partial training with his feet. We see that Rihito blocked the kick, but that it was really powerful and that if he hadn't done it, uh, he would have cracked his jaw open. Um, Man, as we get to the end of the chapter, Toyota's congratulating Falcon, saying he did a good job, and says, You're not an ex-magician for nothing. <laughs> um, so, Falcon says, Behold my ninja misdirection, have at thee. And Rihito says, So this is ninjutsu you're on. So, um, apparently Falcon has, like, three different backstories all at the same time. Which is alright. I mean, it kind of seems like the author may have not been able to decide exactly what they wanted to do with Falcon. Um, but then again, uh, it would certainly be very interesting to see what someone who's experienced all these different sorts of lifestyles, what they would be capable of. Uh, it's also really neat that he's an ex-magician. Um, Kengen does this thing I really like where they take things that you wouldn't ever expect to be used in a fighting manga, and then they use it, like, um, Adam Dudley being a former, uh, hockey player, and talking about the importance of balance when getting into a brawl in a hockey ring. Like, just stuff like that. I think it's those type of things that really make Kangen so special. Um, but yeah, Rihito seems pretty confident, though that may just be because he's Rihito, but, um... I think that next chapter we're going to see Rohito pull out some shit. He's going to start pulling out some stuff that he learned with Kuroki. I also think that once he shows off the Razor's Edge, uh, the Purgatory Fighters are going to be like, Oh! Oh, shit. Well, um... Damn. This sucks. Um... But yeah, I think this is going to be a fun one. I'm very excited to see what Rihito is up to. This was mostly just the Falcon backstory chapter, and it kind of started the same way that it did with the last round, where you had Carlos's backstory hyping him up. Though I think Carlos's did a lot more to hype him up than Falcon's did. It was just showing that Falcon was is apparently very good at brutalizing people, and has experienced many different things, so he has a lot of different backgrounds to pull his experience from, but I think that something important here is that the end of the first chapter of Carlos vs. Gao Lang, you had basically Carlos having dodged all of Gao Lang's punches and then giving him a nosebleed and saying the whole, oh, I'm faster than light thing. So you're like, oh shit, Carlos, oh fuck. Carlos is the real deal. But then, with this, instead, you've got Falcon showing off his tricks, but Rahito's like, oh, shit, really? Oh, man, this is gonna be fun. So, I think this is going to be more showing off how good Rahito has become since the Annihilation Tournament. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I do Kangen Omega videos every week. Uh, if you enjoy other series like wreck of Ragnarok, Chainsaw Man, Bleach, and Jujutsu Kaisen, I do videos on those series as well. Follow me on Twitter, I'll have a link in the description below, and I'll see you around.